Okay, next up we're going to explore the ventral view of the brain. And here it is. Just to orient you, this is going to be the anterior or front part of the brain, and this is the posterior or back part of the brain. Right here is the spinal cord. So you may already recognize these from the lateral view. Those are the olfactory bulbs. Again, these serve to kind of relay information from the olfactory epithelium and the nerves carrying that smell information from the olfactory epithelium in the nose, and it relays that information back to the brain. You'll notice that here, Roman numeral 1 is in parentheses. That's because the olfactory bulb is actually the first of 12 cranial nerves. Again, a nerve is a bundle of axons outside the central nervous system, in the peripheral nervous system. And this is considered the first of 12 cranial nerves. Really, they're, they come in pairs. So this is the first pair of cranial nerves, the olfactory bulbs. I'll show you the rest in a little bit. We're not, I'm not going to make you learn all of them, uh, but we're going to learn some of the larger ones. Here's the second one. So this is the optic nerve, or cranial nerve number two. Of course, we've got one on each side. Everything in the brain is organized bilaterally. It's bilaterally symmetrical. This is just the stump of the optic nerve. When it was whole, the optic nerve would have continued all the way out to about here, to the back of the eyeball where it would carry uh, visual information from the retina back into the brain. So there's the optic nerve. Where the optic nerves come together and meet in the middle is the optic chiasm. Each of these optic nerves contains about a million axons in humans. About half of the axons from each eye, let's take this optic nerve here carrying information from the left eye, all those axons come in. About half of those axons cross over the midline of the brain and cross over to the other side of the brain. The other half stay on the same side of the brain and continue over here. They continue as the optic tract. So again, about half the axons of the optic nerve cross over and become the optic tract of the other side. About half stay on the same side and form part of the optic tract on this side. Half the axons from this optic nerve cross over form part of this optic tract. The other half of the axons from this optic nerve stay on the same side and form part of this optic tract. We'll talk more about that when we get to the vision chapter. Over here, we've got the rhinal fissure. We've seen that before too. It starts right where the olfactory bulb meets the brain. And everything medial to it, shown in light blue here, is the piriform lobe or piriform cortex. Here we've got the cerebral peduncle. This is part of the midbrain, which we'll talk about later. It's the cerebral peduncle. Peduncle is a word for a stalk, like the stalk on a head of broccoli. Cerebral means of or relating to the cerebrum. So this is the, the stalk of the cerebrum. It's the cerebral stalk, or the cerebral peduncle. So here's your cerebrum, and here's its stalk, like the florets on a head of broccoli and the stalk. Of the broccoli. It's mainly white matter. You can see it just by looking at it that at least the outside is all white matter. Uh, inside there are some nuclei. There are some little chunks of gray matter, somas and dendrites, that perform various functions we'll talk about later. Here we've got the pons. Again, mostly white matter. You can sort of see that it's lighter in color. Again, carrying axons from the forebrain down to the hindbrain and spinal cord, and also there are axons that cross over from one side of the brain to the other here in the pons. And here we have the medulla, or medulla oblongata. I'm only highlighting half of it, but of course the whole thing is the medulla. On either side of the pons, you'll find the trigeminal nerve coming out of the pons. This is cranial nerve number five, the fifth cranial nerve. You're only seeing the stump of it here. This little, this little nub is what's left of the trigeminal nerve on both sides. But it would have come out and made three big branches, turning into three large nerves that carry information to the face and then carry information from the face back to the brain. Next are the mammillary bodies. It looks like just one large structure, but they really are two separate lumps kind of squished together. They're more distinct in the human brain. 
Um, they're, they have nothing to do with lactation. They're not specific to mammals. Uh, the word mammilla is sort of the, the diminutive form of mammary. Apparently some early lonely neuroanatomist must have thought they looked like little breasts. We know now that they're part of a circuit that's important for memory. They're tightly interconnected with the hippocampus, which we'll talk more about later. Just anterior to that is a little hole. The hole is the infundibulum, and the tissue around the hole is called the tubercinarium. So the, the empty space there is the infundibulum, and the tissue around it is what's left of the tubercinarium, also called the pituitary stalk. So you can't see the pituitary gland, but it used to hang off the bottom of the brain right about here, and it would have covered up the mammillary bodies and the infundibulum. And it was connected to the brain by way of the tubercinarium, also called the pituitary stalk. Sometimes you can see a little bit of floppy tissue around the hole. That's what's left of the tubercinarium. Here we've got the oculomotor nerve. Now, this photograph shows a brain that does not have the oculomotor nerve attached. But if it was attached, it would be right about here and right about here. About half of the brains that we will be looking at uh, don't have an oculomotor nerve attached. They often become disconnected when the brain is taken out of the skull. You can see that it's cranial nerve number three. It would attach right here and then hang off going forward, kind of lays flat against the, uh, the ventral surface of the cerebral peduncle. And it kind of looks like a, a small piece of cooked linguine. It's kind of a flat, floppy nerve there, attached right there. And you might guess, based on its name, what its function is. Oculus is the Latin word for eye. Motor means movement when you're talking about neuroscience. So the ocular motor nerve is actually one of three different cranial nerves that controls eye movements. So it's the third cranial nerve, but it's the first of three that control eye movements. There are two smaller ones that we won't be able to see. Over here, we've got the lateral olfactory tract. Hopefully you remember that a tract is a bundle of axons in the central nervous system. So this uh, little ridge right here, you can sort of see it on both sides. It's a slightly raised ridge, not quite as wide as the, uh, the pointer here. And it's got a little cleft on either side of it, kind of a little sulcus. So it's a little bit raised, a little bit lighter in color. And that's the lateral olfactory tract. Again, it's axons relaying smell information back to the piriform lobe. The only cranial nerves that you'll need to remember are the ones that I just showed you. But I'd like you to see where all those cranial nerves are. There are 12 of them as you can see here. Some of them are rather small. Their size is exaggerated in this, this illustration here. Uh, and as a result, the small ones tend to get kind of torn off as the brain is extracted from the, uh, the skull. There are also 30 spinal nerves shown here. So these are again bundles of axons that come out of the central nervous system, in this case, along the spinal cord 